Hello and welcome to Ketster ADV, the channel dedicated to riding, adventure, and life's journey, which is always best made on a motorcycle. We're not on a motorcycle today, but we are here at Cheats and Itza. I'm standing in front of El Castillo, and behind the camera is my beautiful assistant, Mrs. Ketster ADV. Some say that she could be Miss Scotland, and others say that she has a face that could launch a thousand ships. But I just say she's pretty good at holding the camera. Gonna take a walk around the plaza here today and show you some of the features at Cheats and Itza. Now, one of the things I'm really interested in seeing here is there's a lot of speculation that many of these old structures were not, in fact, built by the civilizations that were getting given credit to them. Uh, a lot of these may have been built by a previous unknown civilization. They had a much higher level of um, of ingenuity when it comes to uh, energy and how to move some of these stones and how to even cut some of these stones and to fit them so perfectly together. So we're going to take a look at that today and when I uh, see something that's interesting I'll make sure to point it out. I'm standing now in front of El Castillo which is one of the main features here at Chichen Itza. One of the things it's known for is this interesting acoustic property and it can be displayed, if someone claps their hands, you can really hear an interesting echo coming off of the building. I would show you if my hands weren't full with the camera. The structure is 79 meters tall and is the tallest of the pyramids here in Mexico. And we're approaching El Castillo from the side that has the snake heads at the bottom of the stairs. There's a lot of people here today, as I guess there is all the time. But what an amazing thing to see firsthand. We're now in front of the Temple de los Guerreros. And it's got its name because of the carvings of the Mayan warriors that are on all of these pillars here. I've also seen it referred to as the Temple of a Thousand Pillars. When I look at some of these structures, it's clear to me that you can see two different forms of construction. So if you look at these stairs here, you'll see they're made of very large blocks and they're very well fit together. Now, all of these blocks have suffered over time due to erosion, but also there was a point in time where they allowed people to climb on all these structures. When they stopped was about 2015 when an elderly man fell down the stairs of El Castillo and was killed. But they had also received many warnings from uh, archaeologists that having people be allowed to climb on these structures was damaging and irreparably eroding the structures. But you can see these very large blocks that are very well fitted together and they would have been very very heavy. And then if we come over to the side of the building here, you can see the wall that's cobbled together with smaller stones with a lot of mortar in between. Whereas these larger stones are put together and there is some mortar in between many of them. This could have been repairs, but in some of these uh, structures that are believed to be possibly ancient megalithic structures or created by an ancient unknown civilization, you see a lot of the very large stones used that are very well fitted, very cleanly cut and fit together very cleanly much different than on the sides of the building where at the top of this wall you can see the smaller stone fit together with mortar. That would have been more along the lines of the technology that the mine would have had at the time that these structures were built. 
there are many structures throughout Central America, South America, and the rest of the world, in fact, that are believed by many to have been created by a former unknown civilization and not by the people who are given credit for their construction. Could this be one of those examples? Maybe. If you look at the wall to the right here, you see these very large stones and they're pretty well fit together. You see the stairs with the very large stones, which would have been very heavy. And then as we come over to the other side, at the top of the wall here, you can see the cobbled together construction using small stones that would have been easily managed along with a mortar that's in between to hold it all together. So to me, it's clearly two different types of construction that were used in some of these. And the people who are increasingly believing that there was a former unknown civilization that created many of these structures, this could be evidence of it. Two different types of construction, which could indicate that when the Mayans arrived here, they found a remaining structure that was left behind by a previous civilization, and then they built on top of what they found. So a lot of these megalithic structures, they'll have one form of construction for the, for the foundation of, of the structure, and then you'll see the construction with the cobbling together of small stones using a lot of mortar for the upper levels of construction. Like they found an already existing foundation and then built upon it. And here we have some examples of some statues of serpent heads. And there's something similar to this inside of El Castillo. There's actually another temple inside and you used to be able to enter it before the, they closed down the stairs uh, in 2015. But there's a structure similar to this, which they think may have been some sort of a throne but it's actually painted red, and it has the head of a jaguar. When we look at this structure here, we can see once again, a lot of very well-fitted large stones, especially at the top of the wall here, which would have been very heavy, weighing many tons. And then there's also areas where you see the construction where there's areas that are cobbled together with small stone using mortar. And then we come back and we see a lot of the large stone. Is it possible that the Maya could have found this structure here, made some repairs where the, some of the large stones had fallen out, and then carved these inscriptions into the stone? which would not have been outside of the technological capabilities of the Maya of the time. But look at how cleanly these stones are cut and how cleanly they fit together. This could be suggested of a much higher level of technology than the Maya had at that time. And here we go again. You can see, if you look at the side of the stairs there, the very large stones that are well fitted. And at the base of the structure here, the very large stones that are well fitted together. And then there's areas which looks like they could have been repairs where they use the small stones that are cobbled together with mortar. And you can see there's a lot of mortar. The mortar was used to fill fairly large spaces. But then, you look at these large stones that were used in the construction of the stairs. And then we see more of this construction using the smaller stones and a lot of mortar. This could have been repaired. They could have found some of these structures in various states of disrepair. They were left behind by a different civilization. And then they built on top of it to suit the structures to themselves. But these two animals are both
And everywhere I look around here at Chichen Itza, I'm finding all sorts of structures that raise my curiosity about who actually constructed these. Again, we see the very large stones very well fitted together. This would have been quite a task to cut these stones so precisely. And then if you look at the top of this wall here, you see the lower part with the large stones very well put together and shaped. And then at the top, you see the smaller stones cobbled together using a lot of mortar. And whether or not these were built by a previous unknown civilization, you can certainly see that there was more than one standard of construction going on here when this complex was built. As we pass along the wall inside this ancient ball court, we can see how finely constructed these walls are and how well fit together these very large stones which make up this wall are. Much different than some of the other construction we see here at this very site. If you can imagine the manpower it would have taken to move one of these very large blocks that's in the upper wall. Almost defies the imagination. And it's hard to really get a good aspect from the side of it, how straight this wall is. Many of the carvings that were left behind by the Mayans have faded away or have eroded over time. But there are many carvings along this wall. This is a wall where, or this is a court where they would have played a ball game. And the winners or the losers, however you may look at it, would have been sacrificed to the gods. You can see here some of the carvings and you can see areas where some of the blocks that were carved have either fallen off or were eroded to the point where they needed to be repaired and behind it we see the very small stones with a lot of mortar holding it together. Okay, so I'm standing at the back side of the platform of Venus now. We've been around the entire area. It's been really interesting to look at the different types of uh, construction that were used. Now, the Maya that were here at the time and were given credit for the construction of a lot of these temples, they're very small people, you know, uh, maybe as small as four feet. Uh, and as you can see, a lot of these stones were very large. It would have been quite an undertaking to not only cut these stones so precisely, but to put them in place so precisely, and to bring them from the quarry that they came from. So it's definitely something to think about. And there's uh, a gentleman named Brian Forrester who has a YouTube channel called Hidden Inca Tours. If you're interested in some of the ancient megalithic structures, he has an amazing collection of videos that he's taken at different places all over the world. And he also, uh, offers tours to some of these areas, which I would find very interesting to do one day. But for now, signing out, thank you for watching Kepster ADV. Until next time.